Good morning, and welcome to this Liturgy of the Word for the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Most Reverend Monsignor Michael Champ. I'm the Bishop of the Old Catholic Church of Antioch here in Tucson, and looking forward to being with you today. Let us begin. Our entrance antiphon is from Psalm 70. God, come to my help. Lord, quickly give me assistance. You are the one who helps me and sets me free. Lord, do not be long in coming. And let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Father, whose kindness never fails. God, our Father, gifts without measure flow from your goodness to bring us your peace. Our life is your gift. Guide our life's journey. For only your love makes us whole. Keep us strong in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from Isaiah, chapter 55. The prophet, known only as Second Isaiah, addresses the captives of Babylon, and he gives them hope by referring to the eschatological banquet, that is, the meal of the end times. God's kingdom then will be on earth, a kingdom of peace and prosperity for all Hebrews, it will be established with an ideal Messiah, an anointed king, to rule over them in the name of God. Then God will make a new and everlasting covenant with his people. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm today is from Psalm 145. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Join me. The hands of the Lord feed us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. The hands of the Lord feed us. He answers all our needs. Our second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. In rhetorical language, Paul brings out that we should have a firm hope of participating in the bliss of God's promise, that is, the messianic banquet, as we have meditated upon in our first reading from Isaiah. We may be depressed and have to go through times of confusion, but nothing can separate a believer from the love of God. This is the reading of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now prepare for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Join me. Alleluia, Alleluia, 
Alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, and I might worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading of the gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go into villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus answered them, There is no need for that. They need not go away. Give them some food yourself. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all that we have. He said, Bring them to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. And then they picked up the fragments that were left over, filling twelve wicker baskets. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They all ate and were satisfied. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The recounting of the feeding of the 5,000 with a few loaves and fish is something that is repeated in every one of the gospels all of the synoptics, and John. But only in John do we hear that the loaves and fishes came from a young boy. It's particular to note that in John, who does not use parables, John points out that the boy gave the fish and the loaves, but it was all that he had. Uh, ostensibly, he was there to sell them, perhaps to make enough money to buy groceries or whatever for his family. But then the point is that he gave everything that he had. The other point that is interesting is in Jesus thanking God, breaking the loaves, and distributing it among the people, we have yet one more example of what will become for us the Holy Eucharist. We believe in the Messianic banquet celebrated each time that we go to Holy Mass, and particularly in Holy Mass, we are made one with Christ in a very physical, a very real way when we partake of Holy Communion. For we believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Some of our separated brethren do not. They celebrate the memorial Mass as simply that, a memorial. It is not a partaking of the actual body and blood of Jesus Christ, but for them it is just a remembrance, and they only do it occasionally. However, we are invited to come and be part of the Lord's banquet at every opportunity. And so that is why at this particular time, when we're restricted from going to Mass and restricted from receiving communion on a regular basis, it's a trial for us. We who believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ, particularly those of us of the Catholic persuasion, are disadvantaged by the fact that we cannot congregate, we cannot get together. There's a local parish here in Tucson that has taken to offer drive-in masses. And I'm, taken, uh, I'm reminded of the time when Robert Schuler in Garden Grove, California, decided to, decided to start his church. And he did it at a drive-in theater where people would drive up to the posts. And you remember these old speakers that they put into their cars? And they became one with his particular worship service in the drive-in theater. Well, that's being done now. And then at Holy Communion time, this particular parish does a rather novel thing. They have the parishioners drive around to the front of the church and open their windows and receive Holy Communion through the window. I guess they are observing the spirit and the letter of the law of separation and, and social distancing, but they have found a way to celebrate the Holy Eucharist and to do it in such a way that is in fact meaningful. And uh, from what I hear, I have not attended myself. It is something quite lovely. 
Well, I don't have that particular opportunity. I have yet to find a calling for my ministry here in Tucson. I hope to in the very near future, at which time I'll once again be able to say Mass uh, for a congregation. And when my shipment arrives from Panama, I'll have all my vestments and all the Mass accoutrement. I'll be able to say Mass for you here in a virtual way. But what we are doing when we say Mass, when we attend Mass, is we are attending a Eucharistic banquet. Now, the banquet is repeated in the liturgy, in the scripture, and all of the, all of the writings of the particular messianic times, the biblical times, that recount where bringing people into a banquet was a very meaningful thing. Eating together was a, miracle, a, a, a very meaningful thing. I remember growing up in the 1950s and 60s with my parents in Crete, Nebraska, and then in Lincoln, Nebraska, where coming together with the family was extremely meaningful. And we saw that repeated in many, many families throughout our particular uh, neighborhood and, and our city. This has fallen, we have fallen away from that in our current world, and I think that's a great, dis a great difficulty. It's a disadvantage of the modern age that families have become separated. But on the other hand, we have a mobile economy, we have a mobile society, and people are not together with their families. At one time, Danielle, my beautiful wife, brought all our children together when we lived in Albuquerque. And this was a great joy for her. And we celebrated many times together once again. Very meaningful opportunities surrounding a banquet, surrounding eating together, sharing the stories of the day, sharing people's concerns, sharing problems that they had, also sharing their joys and accomplishments. This is a portending what will in fact occur in the messianic banquet of everlasting life. And this is in line with the scriptures that we've been reading over the past several weeks, where Jesus is being, uh, uh, is shown being uh, uh, explanatory, if you will, about what the kingdom of heaven will be like. We are taught in, in the last that kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of great price where one sells all that he has and finds it or a treasure hidden in a field and a person buys the field. And so here now we get the, the example of the feeding of the 5,000 where there's a, a banquet involved around Jesus. Particularly in this particular case is, is quite interesting because Jesus was in quite a, quite a lot of sorrow. His, his cousin, his best friend, perhaps, a John the Baptist, was reported just having been murdered. I'm sure that he was quite despairing in that. As a human being, one does get sorrowful when, when one's important people die, taken away from them. But yet he was compassionate for the crowd. He cured their sick. He welcomed them to him, even though he had attempted to escape and go to a deserted place. This is what we are charged with. We are charged with expanding our world to those who need us, to those where our message will be of import in their lives. If nothing else, just our good example is of value. The spending of our time with a lonely person or spending of our time and our energy in volunteer efforts. Danielle was very active in a group in Panama called God's Eyes, where she went out with people of her particular congregation and distributed uh, eyeglasses for the indigenous peoples, and at the same time spread the word of God. This was a worthy ministry, and many, many people, for perhaps the first time in their life, were brought into the fold of the Messianic banquet in terms that they were gathered together in the particular uh, effort to bring them the word of God. And so that is what I'm doing now. That is what this Liturgy of the Word is all about. Help bring the word perhaps to life for some people, and at the other hand, recounting those things that we have heard many times in the past. My own particular twist on the ideas are, are just my way of sharing those things that I've gained over 70 plus years of living, and I hope that they find some home in, in your thoughts. My friends, Thank you so much for the opportunity to share these times with you, and I hope in, in very, very due course that I'll be able to celebrate the Mass with you once again. God love you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful Lord, make holy our gifts to you, our spiritual sacrifices, our corporal and our spiritual works of mercy that we perform for those around us in our world. Let them be an everlasting gift to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. 
You gave us bread from heaven, Lord, a sweet-tasting bread. It was very good to eat. Lord, you who give us the strength of new life by the gift of the Holy Eucharist, protect us with your love and prepare us for eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Lord Jesus, we have come to you and we ask your blessing. We ask you to give us encouragement. May our prayerful meditation with the Holy Spirit give us strength to see the potential that we have within ourselves and look for the opportunities that we have, not only to share your word, but to share our strengths, our talents, our passions with others in need. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy of the word has ended for today. Let us go forth now and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. God love you all, and thanks for joining me today.